Hello everyone. I am here with a little couple little tutorials. I am going to um sh I got these two envelope makers. And I know some of you have them, but some of you don't, and I want to show you how to use them. I have these um a ton of these that I was been putting some in my D stash. Um, bags, but I thought I would make um, envelope envelope um, bundles out of them. And I also have this shaped one. It's like 4.75 inches by 6.75. And this one is a 6 by 6. So I was digging through my stuff and came out with these little bundle of stuff. And yeah, I thought I would make some envelopes and show you how to use these. Um, your 6x6 papers have this little corrugated line right there and you have to take this part off. I usually cut it because I'm not real well about ripping that off sometimes. Sometimes I rip this and ah, yeah, it's a hot mess. So you got to take that off and you can use this in your scraps or throw it away if you want. Some people use it. Sometimes I use it. And you can cut it like right here and like this and you can take your um, this is what I do with them sometimes you can take your um, hole reinforcers and I would put one of these on both sides I don't have another one sitting here by me or I would do that you could put it on both sides and reinforce that and you can put like a little word tile on here and take one of your ball pins let me see yeah one of these little bulb pins right here get that out here and you can there's so many options <laughs> my mind just works 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 while i'm doing this this wasn't even part of the plan but you can add a little button a little piece of um lace and then hook this on here like so and then it's a little tabby for one of your journals you can put like a little word tile on there or um I don't know, you can just do some layering of lace on here too if you want to. You can just do so much with it. And then you can just, I'll use this as an example, <laughs> one of your pages. This is a little, you can do this. I do it a lot. You can punch a little hole in one of your pages. And you put your hole reinforcers on that as well. What are my hole reinforcers? I have so much stuff laying here. This is pretty much going to be like a little craft with me type of video, I guess, because I'm doing... Oh, look at that. I found it. Found some. So you put this on your little page. I do it on both sides because I don't want it to rip at all. And then... You would hang this on the side of your page. Come on. Sometimes it's a little wonky at first, but it works and it's so cute. And it just hangs either outside of your book or what did I do here? It just lays there or, you know, for decoration on your page. And you just put that in your signature. Voila. And you can also, you know, that's a, another use for one of these. And the hole, and like this piece, you can even take this little hole punch. You get this like at Walmart or whatever. And make another one out of that side. So, yeah, that's an idea for that piece. Let's see. Back to the envelope making. <laughs> Um, we'll do this one first. On this particular board, I'm going to use my 6x6. Six six, so you look right here where it says paper size. And there's two different ones for 6x6. Six six. There's this one. 
Hold on, let me put my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. There's that one. And then your score line would be two and five eighths. Or there's this one where your score line would be three at three inches. And up here, there's all your score measurements right there. So this six by six, I'll do the first one. And it's, what did I say that was? Two and five eighths. So you just go over to here. And you look for two and five eighths. And right there, take this out. You punch it. And then score it. And then that leaves you with your, this paper's a little busy, but so you can see your score line. And you line that, you turn your paper, see we had it like this, then you turn your paper this way, and you line your score line with this little guy right there. And I have to sit down so I can see, because this paper is, which makes it right there. You ignore all this now. Don't even pay attention to that anymore. You just pay attention to your score lines and make sure that they are lined up with this little tip right here. And then you score your next one, punch, you turn it and line it up again, score line being right there. And you score again, punch, line it up. It's so hard to see. I can't see. I'm blind as a bat. Okay. Punch. This paper is just a little busy. Then, voila, you got all your score lines right here. And then you turn it around over here like this, and you stick that in there and push, and it rounds your tips if you don't want them pointy like that. And you just round them all. And there you have your envelope. Then you take it and fold it. I take this bone folder and I kind of reinforce those folds like so. And there's two ways you can use these. This paper is not the best at showing you, but you can have your envelope going this way, you know, to where you have it going in that way. Or you can flip it and have it like this and have it, you know, going that way. There's all sorts of different things you can do. And if you have it going this way, what I did with mine is when I have it going this way, I take my small scoreboard here and I, um, let's see, how did I do that? I fold this over, flip it, and I lean it up against right here so it's even. And then I just kind of score down a little bit right here. I hope you can see what I'm doing. Just a little bit on the knob, if you can see that right there. And then I fold it over so it's like that. So it makes it look more like a, um, I don't know, top loading envelope instead of a sideways envelope, if that makes any sense. I hope you can see that. That's how I do this on this one. Or if you don't want it like that, you can do it like this. But yeah, that's that little envelope. Now let's try. Let's try the next size. Let's do one that I can maybe see a little better. Let's do the six by six and score it at three and see what it looks like. Punch it, line it up at three inches, punch it, score it, and then you ignore this after that. You just line up your score mark with this tip right there. There's my score mark. And then 
You can either score it first and then punch it, or you can punch it and then score it. Your own preference after that. Look at that. And it always comes out super even. I love it. And then I'm going to go over here, punch my little corners, fold it. And then you have this shape. And this one's more of a square, so it doesn't really matter which way you go with it because it's a square. <laughs> so, scoring it at, at two and five eighths and then scoring it at three inches makes this difference of envelopes. Makes two different size envelopes. A rectangle and a square. And you can get both of these Actually, you could get three different ones, like if you shit, you know, want some that way and then want it to be this way. So you can get three different size type shapes out of the six by six pieces of paper. And if you have 12 by 12s, you can cut them in, you know, six by six and you get four envelopes out of your 12 by 12s. So yeah, that's that little F envelope maker. Let's go to the next little dude. This one I haven't used very much, but it's super cute and super fun. I already have my papers over here. I was playing with it a minute ago. And this one, your measurements are out of this piece of paper. I think I went with um, paper size four and a half by four and a half right there. That's the envelope I can get the most out of this piece of paper by doing the four and a half by four and a half and scoring it at two and a half. So let's try that. First of all, we have to cut our paper down. And I only have my big old cutter here, so I don't know if you can see this, but let me, I'm going to cut a few of them down because I'm going to make a bundle. So let's see, I would cut at four and a half right here. This and then that leaves you all of these for later. And then I turn my little bundle around and cut it at four and a half again. And you only have these little strips left. You can either save them or toss them. I'm going to toss them because I have enough going on here. I don't need to save those little guys. So yeah, we have that. And then that'll be your envelope. And then later, these are going to be, whoopsie, these are going to end up being your tags that go inside your envelope. So let's do the envelope first. Okay. We got this little guy, and this is how it comes. Actually, I taped the instructions right there just because I don't know why, in case I ever want to get rid of it, and it would be, like, new to someone else. So we take this little guy, and it's exactly like the big one, only it just does tinier little envelopes. And there's the little score numbers right there. And we are going to do, let's do this color might be able to see it better. We're going to do four and a half by four and a half. So we score at two and a half. So you go over here and there's the two and a half right there. So punch 
This guy is so little. <laughs> Cracks me up. And now, ignoring the measurements, you only use that for the very first one. And I cannot see this very well, so punch. What am I doing? Where is it? I'm blind. You got to make sure you get it in the score line. Okay, let's see right here. Unless I'm standing right. For some reason, this little, you know what? I'm not using that one. That one's too short and fat, so I'm going to get this one out of my other one and use that. Much easier. But this is the one that comes with it. So I was trying to use it, but for me, it doesn't work so well. And there you go. You can't really see it, but it's scored. And then the same with this one. You turn it and just do the little... Rounding the corners. And then we'll fold it. I like these because they're double-sided, you know, all these papers are. Come here, little guy. And then there you go. You have your little envelope. Isn't that cute? So cute. And just like the other one, you can score that little line or have and have it go this way, open this way, if you like. It's going to be so cute. I love it. Now, you just take, I'm just going to take a different one and put it in here. What I did, you can make your little card to go inside with the leftover pieces. And if mine's going to be like this way, I make a little like journal card. But if it's going to be this way, I usually make a tag, if that makes any sense. But let's see. I just put it like this, and I just kind of eyeball it. Like right there. Let me cut this really quick. Hopefully I did it right. I don't want to bring that big old thing back up here for nothing. Make sure. Oh, yeah. Perfect. See, then you have another cute little card to go inside of it like that. And if you want it the other way, I'll show you what I do. This is what I did with this one. I was messing around. <laughs> See, I scored that little piece right there, folded it over just because I didn't want it to stick out like way over here. And then I just made a tag out of the spare piece, poked a hole in it, and I'll put my reinforcers on there. And then you just put your little tag in there. And close your envelope. I just love that. So cute. Two different options of how to make this one. And on this, I would actually take your rounder and round these corners as well. Like that. And put it in there. You can either like... um glue these in your book or just glue the sides down and put a little closure on it and clip them in your books. So yeah, that's what I'm doing with all of these little six by sixes and these other little oddball shaped pa papers. I'm going to take my two envelope makers and make a bunch of envelope bundles. And I will hopefully have them up for sale on the junk journal boutique soon so let's set that aside for a second because i have another little thing i'm working on somebody wanted me to show them how to make how i make my fabric twine and let me get all this out of the way oh my goodness gracious but this is my fabric twine I've been working on while I'm watching TV. I absolutely love it. It's so fun. It kind of hurt my hand at first, but I'm getting used to it. And I'm finding, an, you know, 
not so hard of way of doing it. But I super love this. It's so cute. And there's just all sorts of different colors in there. I just love it. But yeah, there's that. And the way you do this, I'll show you how to begin doing it first, is you take two pieces of fabric. I'll do these two and see. And you get, I rip them, so there's a lot of strings on these, but I just take all the strings off and you just put them together and tie a knot in the top like that. I'm not going to do it super tight because these are actually going to end up on my twine bundle right here, but I want, for the sake of starting, I want to show you how to do it. And you hold it like so and you twist give it a couple twists away from you twisting away from your body and then you bring it over the top towards towards your body over the second piece of twine or fabric and then you give it a couple twists like this away from your body and you bring it back over the twine towards your body. And I always just move my hands up. And then you twist this one a couple times. Bring it over towards your body. Twist this one. Bring it over. Twist away from your body. And bring it over that one. And that's just all you do is you just keep going and going and going until you get to the bottom. And see, so you can let go and it does not it does not undo itself. Is that the strangest thing ever? You can just drop it, go do what you got to do, come back, and just start right where you left off. Twist it over. Twist it over. Just like that. And then you just, you get your beautiful twine that way. And to add to your yarn, let's see, I'm going to put that over there and show you how you add to it. See, this is where I left off. So I would just twist and bring it forward. Twist away from my body, bring it forward. Bring it forward. And to add to this, let's see. And if you're not comfortable with just dropping it, you can do this. Clip it with a clothespin. Isn't this clothespin cute? Miss Bonnie gave me that. She made it. It's so cute. I love these. So I just save them and use them when I'm doing this sort of thing. Okay, let's add this little piece of fabric. And this is, some people don't add a little tiny bit of glue, but I do. You do not have to. They, they, it stays in, but for some reason, for my own sanity, I seem to think that I have to add a tiny bit of glue. So, I just take my little fabric tack and put a little tiny tiny little bit of glue on there and I just take my next piece of fabric and I just tap it on like so put this back on here oh my allergies are horrible I don't know about you all but my face has just been plugged up lately and it's just oh, it gives me migraines I hate it so bad and then you can take that off I twist. I have to hold mine like this. This is how I have to hold mine. Or, I don't know. I just This is what works for me. And you'll find out what works for you, too. And see, I just take this and I fold it in on itself. Like that. And then I just twist it. Bring it forward. Let me get down to that part. A little closer.
Okay, now I'm down to here and I'm going to just roll that on itself like that and twist it and then I just hold it and I just twist that like that. I gotta move my hand down. <laughs> my hands. I've kind of got this down to where I can do it. And then you just keep going. And it doesn't fall apart. It's so strange. And just, what's the matter? My dog's having a hissy. I don't know why. Maybe UPS is out there and I can't hear him. I don't know. But you just keep going like that and see? It just stays together. You can pull on it and everything. It doesn't even fall apart. That is so crazy to me. <laughs> but yeah, right there's where I attached it. And I'm pulling pretty hard and it does not even fall apart. And it doesn't even untwine itself. So you really don't need this. But if you want, you can put it on there. And then once I... I got this when I got my whole bunch of lace that I bought. And so I'm just... I just wind it on here and keep winding it on here and then I just keep going <laughs> so yeah that's how I make my twine and you can use this for like um, closures there's so much you can do with this so much your mind can just go crazy with this stuff and but I'm just like loving looking at it right now you can make rugs out of these baskets you can do so much with this. So yeah, that is what I was playing with today. And I hope this helps you know how I make this. And I hope these little envelope makers help you to use up some of your six by six papers and your oddball shaped papers like this one. Of course, you have to cut that off, but you know that already. But yeah, that's how I do all that. Thank you so much for playing with me today and hanging out. And I will chat at y'all soon. Don't forget to subscribe and like and hopefully stick around for my next video. Have a great day. Bye-bye.